Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the fourth day of Education USA Virtual Week and Roadshow. My name is Zani, Education USA Advisor from Myanmar. And in this session, we will be share, hearing from Dr. Carlson from John Hopkins Carey Business School. And today's topic is MBA in the United States. And if you are watching Facebook Live, feel free to ask questions on comment and also here on Zoom, just type your questions in the Q&A box. Dr. Carlson, thank you so much for joining. It is very early in the morning, so we really appreciate giving this session, so Dr. Carlson. Thank you so much, Darim. Hello, everyone. Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you are. Uh, and it's wonderful to be here with you today. And thank you so much, the team of Education USA in Myanmar, uh, to invite me to give this session. Uh, it's my great pleasure to collaborate with Education USA team. Uh, my school and I specifically have been working with Education USA teams around the world. So this is a great, uh, a great opportunity and um, really excited to be with the team in Myanmar today. For the topic today, we will focus on MBA programs, but we will touch maybe on some other programs as well. So it's a little bit bigger. We will explore graduate business education in the United States, and we will focus more on MBA programs. Uh, just briefly about myself, uh, I'm coming from a business background, international business. I worked in many different organizations, international companies, uh, and the last uh, about 15 years in leadership positions in the United States in higher education. So I will be bringing some perspectives from both business standpoint and the higher education uh, when we are talking about the MBA programs. So the topics specifically we will explore, the questions we will explore today, uh, the programs, uh, Master of Business Administration, MBA, programs, uh, market trends, what do employers look for? What are employers looking for when they are hiring for uh, certain positions and looking at MBA graduates? Target groups, we will look at some formats, curricula of MBA programs and admissions requirements more specifically. And then I will share some insights and tips, how to find the program that is the best fit for you, uh, opportunities to consider for scholarship, financial aid, and some tools and resources. This QR code is just a quick form if you'd like to scan. Uh, it's a very quick form where I invite you to post any questions for me. Uh, you can, during the session, you're also welcome to post your questions directly in the um, Q&A. This is the part where you can also include your questions. Uh, but if you are thinking about uh, some long-term um, questions maybe you want to ask later, you're welcome to complete this quick form and I will be happy to stay in touch with you. Uh, just very briefly about the organization that I am working for. It's Johns Hopkins University. It's located in the United States. The main campus is in Baltimore, that state of Maryland, very close to Washington, D.C. Uh, and just a little bit of background because I will be using some references. Uh, the session will be focusing on MBA programs in general, not just the MBA that we are offering but I will use some references to some of the programs or comments from my own experience at our school. Uh, so just a quick background in our school, we offer Johns Hopkins MBA program full-time. That's a two year program offered full-time in Baltimore. And we have master of science programs, six of them listed here, including four STEM designated programs. Uh, and again, this is just a quick background. Uh, the full-time MBA program is a two year program, 54 credits. And we have two pathways, analytics, leadership and innovation and health technology and innovation. Let's talk about an MBA program. When the MBA programs uh, were established originally and people were pursuing MBA, the traditional MBA was a two year program in the United States. In the last few years, uh, there, there has been a trend, developing a trend where MBA programs uh, became in, were designed in different formats. So when we talk about the MBA program full-time, we still think the traditional format is typically two years in the United States. In Europe, uh, many business schools offer MBA that could be completed in one year. Uh, this is just some of the maybe traditions of how different schools uh, design the programs differently. 
in the United States, we think about traditional MBA program, two-year program, as a great change, great program for people who are career changers. We call them career changers. What it means is that uh, it's an opportunity for someone who had already a certain work experience. I will use one example that we see quite uh, often. Let's say if somebody completed an engineering degree and worked as an engineer for maybe three years or four years, at some point, this person has built uh, great expertise in their own area as an engineer. However, at some point, they also start feeling that they, they don't have many opportunities to get much broader experience outside of their well-defined role. At some point also, this person maybe who has worked as an engineer decides that he or she would like to move into the management path. So that would be a very um, common scenario for someone who has the technical certain expertise. It doesn't have to be engineering, obviously. Certain expertise where they decide either to move, prepare themselves to move toward the management and leadership path, or they would like to expand their expertise and build some complementary skills um, that will be um, adding to their expertise, maybe beyond uh, their original area of focus. Sometimes also, again, in engineering specifically or technical background, people find it very difficult to switch to another industry. So let's say if somebody worked again as an engineer, maybe at some point they would like maybe to move more into, I don't know, digital marketing, let's say, or some other area. And people typically find it very difficult to switch from one industry to another. So the traditional two-year MBA program is a great way for someone who would like to switch to another industry that will help them to build more skills, knowledge, cover different maybe sectors or examples from different sectors. And during the traditional two-year MBA program, you are typically expected to do the internship in the summer after the first year. Again, this is a great opportunity to try and find internship opportunity in the sector you are interested in that will help you build some connections, build some network, um, and test, test a little bit what exactly you would like to do moving forward. That's the traditional MBA uh, in the United States. Uh, it also gives you two years, give you enough time to uh, take courses, work on some exciting projects. Uh, many MBA programs offer experiential learning projects, including our program. There are some opportunities maybe to travel, uh, to participate in big career fairs especially for MBA students uh, that are happening typically in the fall and you know in the spring during the year. So all of these are great opportunities for people who plan to switch to another sector, uh, build some additional skills, additional expertise, and want to have a full MBA experience. There are other types of programs that I would like to mention. There is a one-year MBA. Uh, again, in Europe, you could probably easily find uh, many, many business schools that are offering MBA as a one-year program. In the United States, uh, there are some business schools that started offering one-year MBA as well. It's structured and defined a little bit different from the two-year MBA. One-year MBA program is often designed as a specific program for people who work maybe at a certain company. So there is maybe an agreement between the company or several companies and the school that these people from, from those companies will arrive for just one year uh, because the company does not want them to leave the company for much longer. And the students also do not want to leave the company completely. They would like to get more knowledge, build some more leadership skills, uh, and bring this knowledge back to the company within one year. Typically, this type of arrangements for one year MBA, uh, schools expect people to have more work experience. And to make it work in one year, they expect uh, that the students maybe already have an advanced degree. Maybe sometimes they already have master's degree in some field. So they will be able to count certain credits toward their MBA. So that's the one year MBA. Typically, this is for students who do not want to leave their company and company may give them a leave of absence, some sort of um, format vacation um, leave uh, for one year, and they will be expected to return to their own company to the same position or a different position, whatever their arrangement is. So this is not for career changers. It's for people who have more work experience. They are not looking for a longer 
um, experience in the MBA program. They are not looking necessarily to try internship, to switch to another career, another field. Uh, they want to enhance their skills and knowledge and come back to their company. Part-time MBA is a very popular format as well. Uh, many schools, including uh, my school, offer part-time MBA program that, that is for people who work full-time, do not want to leave their job, and they take classes in the evening or on the weekend. Uh, that's typically local students. So since we are today meeting with many people who are based in Myanmar, uh, most of you will be applying to a full-time program. Uh, Part-time is only option for uh, local students. And lastly, we have the online MBA. Online MBA uh, can be completed fully online. That's a great opportunity. You will receive the same degree. And for the online MBA, it typically takes about three years to complete the program because it's a part-time option. You will be taking courses and possibly continuing your full-time work. So these are the main um, formats of uh, types of the MBA program. I'll mention quickly also specialized masters. What we have noticed that uh, recently in the last maybe three to five years, uh, there has been a great increase of people applying to specialized master's programs. And very often people ask this question, how do I decide whether I need to apply to an MBA program or specialized master's? So for this reason, I wanted to quickly mention uh, what does it mean, uh, the specialized master's programs? What, uh, how is it helpful? How to look at this type of opportunities? So specialized master's programs are specialized in one area. And I included some examples below. For example, it could be a Master of Science in Finance, clearly focused on finance. It could be Business Analytics and Risk Management and some others. The Master of Science programs are typically shorter. Use an example in my school, MBA program, full-time two-year MBA program requires 54 academic credits to complete it and get the degree, receive a degree. Specialized Masters uh, are required, students are required to complete 36 credits. So there is a significant difference in terms of the number of credits and the time you would allocate for your studies. So MS program takes a shorter period of time, just one year. In our school, all programs are designed as one year and it's specialized. So you will take some basic uh, blocks, foundations courses, but it's a small number of foundations courses. And then you go more in depth in your area of specialization, such as listed here, finance, information systems, marketing, and so on. So some of the trends in business education. In the last 10 years, we have seen the growth in the number of international applicants. That's true for both MBA applicants and master's programs. We definitely see the growth uh, to specialized master's programs. Uh, in Asia, the, the whole you know, big area um, that we can, be de can define as Asia, a very large number of people is taking now GMAT exams. So that's a good sign for business schools, uh, meaning that many applicants are interested. In terms of the specialized masters, we see a very popular programs such as MS Finance, Business Analytics, and Accounting. These are three uh, programs that are most popular and attracting a lot of uh, applications. There is another program that is uh, becoming a, maybe an alternative to MBA programs that's called either Master of International Management or Master of Management. So that's uh, just a little bit about the trends that we see. So let's talk about employers' demands. What do employers expect to see and what they would like to, um, to see in MBA graduates? This is the data from uh, GMAC. Uh, that's the organization that manages GMAT exam. And you can see some hiring projections. And that's the data for 2009 until 2018 covering 10 years uh, by region, by the world regions. Uh, United States, the MBA hiring uh, is maybe remaining on the same level, but we, we have seen maybe a little bit lower because there is more competition from graduates of other programs, not just the MBA. Uh, the same similar trend we can see in Europe. However, in Asia and Pacific region, um, Asia Pacific region, we can see actually growth uh, and we expect it to be going in the same direction. We also learned that more than nine in 10 Fortune 100 and Fortune 500 companies and publicly traded companies plan to hire recent graduates. And that's the, from the Corporate Recruiter Survey 2018 and similar data we have from 2019.
if some of you are interested in looking at other master's programs, uh, not necessarily MBA, uh, this is an interesting uh, data showing the talent, master's talent, business master's talent that employers want to recruit. This is data from 2018, uh, and it, it remains to be uh, somewhat similar in 2019 as well. And you can see the top fields are information systems, marketing, supply chain, economics, uh, and some others. What is interesting when we compare MBA opportunities uh, when they are hired by employers and opportunities for specialized masters, uh, we can see, uh, especially in the lower part of the slide here, you can see the differences typically MBA are seen as more better positioned to be involved in strategy work. So if you're interested in something that is setting up strategy for the company and working on the strategy, um, building an execution, uh, it's more, more likely that you will be involved in this type of work if you have an MBA versus uh, people who have specialized masters or master in management will be expected to work more on the uh, operational side. These are some of the job functions in which employers plan to place recent graduates. And you can see some of the top uh, fields such as business development, data analytics, marketing, finance, accounting. Uh, that's where a demand is, uh, top job functions. So whether you are planning to pursue an MBA or specialized master's programs, uh, this data helps you to, to see where the demand is, the highest level of demand. So how can you select the right program for you, for yourself? My recommendation would be focus on your career goal. You will want to evaluate all of the factors related to your career. Do you plan to stay in the same industry where you have already been working? Or do you want to switch? And if you want to switch, why? You really want to think a little bit more thoroughly in being able to articulate to yourself, why do you want this switch? You also want to be able to articulate your short-term goals and long-term career goals. Very often when we interview MBA applicants, uh, we would ask this question, why do you think this is the right time for you to do the MBA and why? Why do you want to do the MBA? So I would recommend think through these questions first uh, on your own and be able to articulate it. Depends on your career goals. You may be able to consider several different programs. A quick example that I included here, if you want to work as a program manager and build more expertise in project management or program management, and that's the skill that will be transferable from industry to industry. So it has broader application. The MBA would probably be the right type of program for you. MBA will, build, will help you build those building blocks, understand operations, understand strategy, marketing, finance, uh, you know, build certain knowledge on all of those different components, different functions of the organization. So you will be able to see the organization from a higher, uh, higher viewpoint to see the whole organization, how it's developing and what are some of the interconnectedness and interdependencies of all these functions within the organization. If someone is interested to build their career purely in finance, financial services sector, that's all I'm interested in. And in addition to my master's degree, I also want to maybe get a CFA exam, complete all CFA levels later and get the CFA designation. Then my question would be, do you really need an MBA or is MS in finance would be the right path for you? So that's how I would suggest uh, for you to think about your career goals and what is the right program for you. Think about the program as a vehicle it's the vehicle that will help you to get from where you are today toward your career goal. And that should help you really um, better understand and answer this question, what is the right program in terms of the academic fit and career fit with your career goals. Then you want to research requirements for positions that you aspire to have after graduation. So it's a very good exercise. If you haven't done it, I would strongly recommend spend some time on this. So think about five years from now, where do you want to be? 
and it doesn't mean that it has to be exactly what you are doing today. Think a little bit uh, maybe bro more broadly and uh, be a little bit more ambitious to think really what, what would be your aspirational job and the aspirational companies. So if you look at it this way, you would be able to find several examples, let's say five, the jobs that you would love to have, would love to do maybe five years from now. And look at the job requirements. That will really help you to see what are the gaps that you currently have between your current experience and education and how to get to that, uh, that type of job. It will also help you understand for this type of job and these employers that you're interested in, what is the program education that they are requiring? Do they require MBA? Is MBA going to be helpful? Uh, some companies for certain positions specifically require MBA. We work with several employers who have MBA internship is a pathway to get the internship first. And then if you do really well in the internship, you uh, likely or potentially will get a job offer to return and, and come as a full-time employee. So there are certain paths and training programs. Uh, some companies also have a two-year MBA leadership training program rotation where an MBA uh, applicant or MBA graduate would rotate uh, throughout the company for two years and then they will um, stay with one of the specific functions. So there are some companies that define it specifically, there are certain paths for MBA graduates. And for other companies, the MBA uh, will probably have the same, um, the same level, how, how they are reacting to MBA versus some other master's degree. There are some companies that will specifically require master's level uh, program, master's level degree, whether it's uh, an MBA or specialized masters. So all of this will be very helpful if you identify at least five jobs that you would like to have after you complete your degree. Uh, and then look at the MBA programs that you would like to apply to uh, and determine your eligibility. You would look at the minimum criteria, minimum requirements. Some programs define it very specifically and in some other programs they don't put minimum requirements and you will be evaluated in comparison to others other applicants who applied. Then you would want to evaluate length of the program. As we were discussing, the full-time two-year program in the United States would mean that if you are based in Myanmar, you would need to leave the company that you're working for, maybe leave your family for a couple of years. Um, what does it mean for you professionally, financially, personally? Uh, that's, uh, these are all good factors that are worth evaluating. And from a financial standpoint, of course, you would want to evaluate you know, tuition, housing, travel, and other costs. Academic factors, uh, if you decide MBA is the right program for me, then I would recommend look specifically at the several schools and at their programs. Explore the program curricula, look at the specialization or concentrations that they offer. Are there specific courses that you find very attractive and why? These are all very good questions to explore because if you apply and if you are invited to the MBA interview, most likely you will be asked all these questions. Why did you select our program? What are the courses that you found most helpful and relevant to your interests? So these are all very good questions for you to explore. Uh, look at the graduation rate, look at the employment data, very helpful to look, uh, find the MBA employment report after graduation. Uh, look at the career services and advising. Uh, for MBA applicants, uh, it's very helpful to, to go to the school that has a very well-developed career development center. In some schools, it's called career services. In our school, it's called career development center. Uh, just as an example, in our school, we have uh, close to 20 to, to zero, 20 people who are working at the career development office. Some of them work as employer relations specialists. They uh, build relationships with employers. They try to attract more employers who would come to the school uh, to interview our, our applicants, our students uh, who post their jobs. They, they share their jobs uh, openings, their internship program, their leadership development programs. And we post all these opportunities in our internal network uh, that students have access to. Uh, other part of our career development office are coaches. We call them career coach. Uh, and so each student has an opportunity to work with a career coach individually to shape their career goals, 
understand how the industry they're interested in and understand how they will be working uh, to find to find a job, prepare for the interview and close all of these questions with a potential employer. In the United States, when uh, we talk about the uh, good, you know, good opportunity to opportunity to find the best program, we say, is it the right fit for you? And I found that uh, with many international students, uh, it's a little bit of a challenge to, um, to explain what is the right fit? What does that mean? So to find the best fit for you, I would recommend look at the programs and see what are the majors or concentrations that you are interested in. Do these programs offer the courses, specializations uh, that you are interested in? For example, maybe you want to build more knowledge in consulting or prepare yourself for consulting industry. In our school, for example, we have the consulting network where we bring all resources, faculty who have some knowledge of consulting or teach consulting courses. Uh, we have uh, alumni who work in consulting industry. We bring employer, employers from consulting. So we bring them all together and we call the network. And we have several uh, such networks. In other schools, you may find specifically consulting concentration. Uh, in some schools, you may also find the consulting project that you will be working on. So that's just a quick example. Uh, but also look at the university or campus environment that you will be based in. Some uh, students are interested in living in a certain geographical area. Let's say they, they are more interested in information technology or something to do with the technology, digital transformation, and they are interested in, in to be based in California, let's say. Uh, we, uh, for my school, our, we have two locations in Baltimore and Washington, D.C., and they're very close to each other. And many students are attracted uh, by an opportunity to be based in Washington, D.C. for some programs, let's say, because it's the nation's capital. And a lot of international organizations, such as World Bank, IMF, are based in Washington, D.C. So think about these factors, such as geographical area. Uh, what are the great areas where you are expecting to find internship and job? And there is a lot of data you can explore. It's all publicly available to see which are great areas for MBA applicants, especially for MBA um, job search after the MBA degree and where you can expect maybe to be more successful in terms of job search. So there are many different components there that I would definitely recommend you to explore. Let's talk a little bit about application process and how to build a winning application. In the application, I would recommend to uh, definitely talk about your work experience. In When you build your resume, include your work experience, uh, everything that you've done uh, to highlight how much work experience you have. You can include full time. If you don't have that much work experience, you, you can also include part time work experience or internship. If you have more work year, you know, years of work experience, five, seven, uh, eight, uh, at some point, it may be not important to include internship. However, if you only have maybe one year of one year of work experience full time, uh, it may be helpful to include internship that you previously had. So think a little bit more strategically about the work experience. Understand the minimum meeting how you can meet minimum requirements. In most programs, uh, there is specific minimum requirements for TOEFL or IELTS. In most MBA programs in the United States. Uh, TOEFL is required and most, uh, most programs, most business schools will accept either TOEFL or IELTS. Just as an example, in our MBA program, uh, we expect to see TOEFL 100 and above and IELTS 7 and above. Most business schools in the United States will require GMAT. We also accept GRE and that's true for most of the business schools as well. If you're not sure from the information posted on the website about a specific school, um, I would suggest uh, call, you know, give a call to the admissions officer at the school you're interested in, or send them an email and ask specifically if they will accept GRE instead of GMAT. Uh, in my experience, most business schools will accept either GMAT or GRE, uh, and there is no preference. Very often, uh, schools do not set a specific minimum requirement for GMAT or GRE. So if you're not sure whether your GMAT score is great or maybe needs to be improved, 
the great way to understand it is to ask or find information on the website about previous classes, maybe from the previous one, two years and see what is the average. What was the average score, uh, GMAT or GRE score that this MBA uh, program can tell you about. And the average score can give you, uh, you know, good guidance uh, whether your GMAT score is going to be competitive or if it makes sense to retake. We talked about your career goals already. So the, the career goals should help you identify the right program and being able to articulate why this is, this is the program that provides a great fit for you. So in your application, it would be very helpful and important for you to talk about it through different parts of the application to demonstrate why this, is specific, uh, this specific program is the great fit for you. And another question that you would like to answer throughout the whole application, especially in the essay, part or personal statement, what makes you the best applicant? In the MBA program, we pay a lot of attention to each individual applicant. Uh, many programs um, are smaller size. Uh, for example, many some MBA programs you will find only have 40 or 50 applicants, uh, students. Total number of students will be about 40, 50, maybe 60. So it's still a small size. Uh, in our school, if we receive 60 or 70 students, we split them into two groups. We call them different cohorts, two cohorts. So you are often going to be uh, part of the small group of 30, 40 students, let's say, in the group. That means that each MBA student will bring something valuable to the discussion, to the table. It's, uh, it's really important. So think about it, how you can demonstrate in your application what are the values, the specific skills, expertise you will bring to MBA program. We talked about the resume and the letter of recommendation is a great way for you to ask somebody who knows you quite well, preferably from your company, maybe your current uh, leader, current manager or previous one, uh, to give you a letter of recommendation and talk about specific ways how um, how you brought some value to the organization, maybe about your um, ability to innovate, uh, your ability to be creative, uh, great problem solving skills, whatever it is that is relevant in your case, uh, it would be great to see some specific examples in the letter of recommendation. Admissions requirements, we already reviewed some of them and I will just go through this quickly. This is an example from my school. However, it's very relevant to most of other MBA programs. I would recommend again, look at each program that you're planning to apply to and review what are their application requirements. Most of them will be similar, but it's possible that some of them will be uh, slightly different or significantly different. Typically, you will need to provide the resume, submit the resume, uh, transcripts for international applicants. We ask you to work with the credential evaluation agency, such as WES, World Evaluation Services. Uh, and you can look at it online. Uh, there is a lot of information available. All you need to do is send your transcript to them uh, and they will be doing credential evaluation report and send them directly to the school. So the transcript or uh, credential evaluation agency who will be evaluating your transcript, that's an important piece. A resume, we talked about letter of recommendation. We talked about GMAT and GRE. Uh, some schools may be able to provide a waiver. So if you are interested, to explore this, I would recommend talk to the admissions office and ask them if they are willing to give you a waiver. Many schools will not, uh, including our school, we do not offer GMAT GRE waivers to the full-time applicants. TOEFL and IELTS are typically required, same for my school. And uh, in our school, we also conduct video interview for full-time programs and also uh, when it's possible in-person interview. Also in person uh, is a little bit more challenging these days. Uh, but typically we conduct the interview with MBA applicants. Uh, and I wanted to share with you just a quick uh, video. I will see if I can switch to the video quickly, if it's possible. Give me just one second. Just 
One second. All right, I'm trying to switch. Okay, I think I was able to make it work. All right. Uh, Zarni, you wanted to say something? Are we doing okay with the timing? Uh, yes, we have about five minutes until the Q&A, so I... Perfect. Um, I think good. we are right on track. Uh, just very quickly, maybe when you analyze, uh, you know, look at the programs and see what's, what is exciting, what is interesting for you in those programs. Um, this is just a quick example. A lot of information that you can find here. And there is just a quick video I wanted to show you to give a sense of a very quick glance of seeing whether these, this is the program that gives you the right message, uh, something where you feel excited about the program. So let's see if it's going to work. And that's from our website. Okay, I'm going to uh, go back to my slides. That's here. So that was just a quick example of uh, some videos that you're able to find in uh, to learn about the program that gives you a certain message. So in, in this example that I was showing you, uh, the strong messages that we want to send to our applicants is if you're interested in innovation and data-driven approach to problem solving. So a lot of content that we changed in our MBA program is now focused on data uh, and analytical skills. And that's a somewhat similar that you will see across many business uh, programs now. Uh, strong focus on data because anything that you um, are going to do in any business organization, anything business role, a lot of it is now depends on data and ability to understand data, collect data, analyze data, and how all this analysis will help you drive better business decisions. So you will see uh, many MBA programs are becoming more, um, building more and more skills uh, related to data, technology, incorporated technology and analytical skills. Let's talk briefly about tuition, scholarships and financial aid. One thing that I find very important for um, international students is to understand that in the United States, there are a lot of scholarship opportunities. However, it's not always uh, clear before you apply because many schools, uh, including my school, will consider all applicants for scholarship. However, without seeing your application, we really cannot comment. We really cannot promise that you will be um, the best applicant. So I would encourage you to apply to any schools that you find um, uh, your maybe dream school or you know, you're really excited about I would encourage you not to be afraid, explore and learn more about the scholarship opportunities. And if you think that this is a great fit for you, go ahead and apply. Sometimes international students are concerned if they don't hear upfront that the school could guarantee the scholarship, they will not be applying. And that just doesn't work this way. Uh, we first need to see the application in order to be able to uh, evaluate and see whether this applicant is going to be a strong applicant or not. So this is just uh, one component, of course, scholarship. Hopefully you will be you know, qualified and be able to receive it. Uh, other things you would want also to look at in general, that's an important question about the financial component, you know, look at the tuition. Uh, there are schools that, uh, that have maybe, public schools have different levels of tuition in state for people who are based in the same state, out of state, coming from another school, and often they have a different tuition fees for international students. 
private schools uh, don't have such separation. It's just one level, one level of tuition, whether you are in-state, out-of-state, or international. Uh, and there are also required fees, housing, meals, uh, some other expenses. So all of these are important questions to consider. Some of the examples of scholarships, uh, when you talk to the, to the school, the program that you're applying to, uh, try to understand if the scholarships that they have are merit-based or need-based. And some schools will clearly define, most schools will have it clearly I explained on their website. Uh, an example for my school, it's merit-based. That means that all of the students, applicants who are applying will be considered for scholarship, but we will be looking at the best of the best. So it's all based on their merit. Scholarships uh, could be internal within the school. We will be able to offer some scholarships. There are also some organizations, companies, and international, international and national scholarship programs that I would encourage you to explore further. Some of them are listed here, and there are more resources available uh, publicly. So how many programs do you need to select? Uh, really, it's up to you. We typically hear from applicants that they apply to at least three schools, uh, sometimes more than three, maybe three to five. So really depends on the time you're willing to allocate and your strategy. Uh, some of the common advice that you may hear somewhere that it's uh, how you think about the schools, you find the school that could be described as a match school is where you think you have a relatively good uh, chance to be admitted uh, based on your application, based on your scores, your work experience, you know, all of the components where you expect a very good chance you will be admitted. Then you will have maybe a dream school that will be a little bit of a, maybe a stretch and you're not sure that they will be uh, able to give you an admissions offer. In safety school, where you think you are quite confident uh, and your credentials maybe exceed the expectations or requirements of that school. So this is one way to think about, um, you know, how you can think about your strategy. So some tips and recommendations, and then we will be moving on to the questions and answers. So try to get a lot of information about the university that you are interested in, the school. Typically, it's a business school that offers an MBA program and specifically the MBA program. So sort of three levels. Uh, do your research, spend more time on your research. Develop a very good strategy. Don't be afraid, afraid to apply to some dream schools or rich schools, um, but also have a good list of other schools such as match uh, and safety schools and programs. When people look at all of the MBA programs in the United States, uh, they often rely on rankings that may be helpful uh, to some extent, but I would advise not to rely on rankings only. Uh, learn more about the school specifically, learn more about the program, ask the admissions office if there is a chance for you to talk to the alums, some alumni from this program. You can also find some alumni on LinkedIn. Again, that's your own research. This is publicly available information. Look at the alumni of this school and see what they're doing. Uh, do they have the jobs that you are interested in finding in the future? Uh, don't rule out the programs just because of cost. As we talked briefly about the scholarship opportunities, there are financial aid uh, options and scholarships available. And typically the MBA is, um, it's going to be a, maybe an expensive, uh, relatively expensive uh, journey. And so consider it as an investment in your future. And this is my contact information. You are absolutely welcome to send me a note at any time if you are interested to learn more. Um, I, I welcome your questions and comments at any time now or later. And now we will have some questions and answers. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Carlson. We have some few questions in our chat box. Um, one question is, these days we are seeing a lot of accelerated MBA programs that allow undergrads to do additional year and get an MBA. So do you know how employers view this accelerated degree? Is it preferable to get work experience first? That's a great question. Uh, that's true. We, we see more and more uh, business schools that now attract undergraduate students who would go to their MBA or sometimes master's program directly. Uh, and receive the MBA program, maybe, as you mentioned, even in, in one year. 
It could be a challenge. Uh, it depends on many factors. So it may depend on the individual case. What is this person uh, you know, planning to do? What are their goals after graduation? There are both, both pros and cons there, I could see. For an individual who is planning to go directly from the undergraduate program directly to an MBA, I could see that you know, it saves some time instead of stopping, you know, finishing your education and going to work, sometimes it's challenging to stop your work, leave the company and go back into being a student. And that's a little bit of a challenge that we see with many MBA um, applicants, especially who are more senior, maybe have more work experience. It's a little bit of a challenge for them to go back into the uh, role of a student, student mode. So in that sense, uh, this younger students coming directly from undergrad they find it easier to adjust. They often are doing really well academically because they, they, they're going straight uh, from one coursework to the next coursework. They haven't forgotten anything. From the employer standpoint, there could be some challenges uh, because most employers still want to see some work experience. So for someone who has completed their four years of bachelor's program and then completed an MBA directly after undergrad and have not done anything, hasn't, hasn't received any substantial work experience, it is possible that it will be still a challenge. So it's really, uh, you know, it's an individual case by case that you would need to evaluate and decide what, uh, what do you plan to do? Uh, what is the value of this degree? How you will apply it? And so there is some value in, in the MBA as, as an experience and a credential. It's possible that some employers will recognize this value. Um, and maybe the, these applicants will do really, really well with their job search and application and interview process. It's possible. In general, um, the, the students who are coming to the MBA program are expected to bring their experience and great insights in the conversation. A lot of the work that you do in the MBA program is around discussion, discussion, debate, teamwork. And so each person will contribute something, bring some value to the program. So typically we see that people who have at least two or three years of work experience or a little bit more would be great fit for the MBA program because they already learn about at least one industry. They have some industry experience they already have had a chance maybe to work with other departments within the organization. They have seen some different functions, how they work together. They have experienced some uh, dynamics, you know, team dynamics, how you make the team work. Um, so they can bring all of these great insights in the conversation in the MBA program. Some MBA programs have a very strict requirement that they do not accept applicants who have less than two years experience of experience. That's the logic there. Uh, in general, for most of the traditional two-year MBA program, the average uh, work experience is about five, five years of work experience average. So that gives you, uh, you know, a message, give you a sense of uh, the average typical applicant. Um, so these are some both pros and cons um, of doing the MBA directly from undergraduate program. And again, many MBA programs will not offer this option. It's a great question, though. Thank you. Another question we have is, if I want to get an MBA because I do not like my field line of work, should I be that honest in the application? I would probably recommend it's, you know, this is completely fine to think about it. Maybe, maybe you started doing some job in the field that you just don't feel excited about. You know, some people just find a certain type of job too slow. Maybe you are a high energy person and, and you learn that the field in which you are working now, it's just the pace is not the right pace for you. It's possible. Some people are numbers people. They love working with numbers and some other people really want to be more involved in the conversation, more, you know, interaction with others. It's, uh, it's reasonable and completely fine that first few years, maybe you're still exploring, you're learning about yourself as well. What would be important though, for you to think about what would be your ideal job? So let's say you're not satisfied with your job. You are not super excited about the field of work that you are doing or your industry. Try to, to think about it a little bit more as an exploration. You know, try to find what would be the right field for you and why what would be your ideal job? And, and then from there, like 
start from there, find it. What is it that you are aspiring to be maybe the next three, five years and start from there. What are the requirements for this type of job? Find people who are doing this job in the field that you would be ex excited to be. Talk to them, interview them and see what is their level of education? Maybe you don't need an MBA. Uh, maybe you need to have a slightly different strategy. Maybe MBA will be helpful for you. So start from there, from your ideal job or ideal field that you want to be. And, and move you know, back several steps to, to figure out, is the MBA the right strategy and why? Uh, I don't see anything wrong really with this question, uh, but in the application, you probably want to think and talk a little bit more about your career goal. What, what is your passion? What is your aspiration? Why are you excited about a certain field or job or function or industry, whatever it is that drives you to, to work toward your MBA? So think about it, you know, sort of turn it around instead of thinking I'm moving away from something I'm not happy about, how you can position it that I am moving toward something that I want to achieve. Thank you. Um, we have a really quick question. Uh, does John Hopkins accept Duolingo in place of TOEFL or IELTS? Great question. Uh, right now, we are not accepting uh, these other tests, Duolingo. I know that many other schools started accepting it. Right now, we are accepting TOEFL and IELTS. Uh, but please keep checking if, if we do move into this direction. Uh, it will be posted on our website right away. Thank you, Dr. Carlson. This is uh, all the time we have. And again, I really appreciate your great presentation. Thank you uh, so the, much. Thank you. And again, for all the students who are tuning in from Zoom and Facebook Live, we will have a 10 minutes break. And after that, we will have a, another session on LLM. So if you are interested in going to law school in the United States, please join the next session by Unip University of Nevada in Las Vegas. Thank you. Thank you so much and best of luck to all of you and wishing you uh, all the best. Thank you for having me today. Bye.